Good morning, East LA. Can we all stand? On behalf of our pastors, Hector Cash and Sister Michelle, we want to welcome you to Sunday morning service. Yeah. If this is your first time here, we want to welcome you. If you do not have a church to call your own, we would love to have you here and call you a brother or sister. Amen. Um, if we could all bow our heads. Lord, we come before you today, Lord, to thank you for today, Lord, and thank you for yesterday, Lord. Thank you for what you've done in our lives, Lord. Lord, anybody here with a heavy heart or heavy mind, Lord, hear them, Lord, feed them, Lord, and, and speak to them, my God. Lord, we ask that you cover our pastors with the healing touch, Lord, and protection, Lord, as they make their way to service today, Lord. Lord, that the word that the pastor speaks today feeds everybody, Lord, and fills our hearts, Lord, and everybody here that has questions or... Hallelujah! I'll rejoice and be glad with all that I am. This is the day you made. Rejoice and be glad in you. Oh, 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 oh. see, this is the day you, day you made. I'll rejoice and be glad in you. There's a supernatural praise rising up in my heart, up in my heart. Sound that has to be you made oh, oh come on church you ready so my heart will sing you are good you are good and with everything i will praise i will praise hey. oh, oh. This is the day you made. I'll rejoice and be glad. 
God with all that I am. This is the day you made. I'll rejoice and be glad in you. There's a supernatural praise rising up in my heart, up in my heart. Sound that has to be made. Oh, come on, we declare. So my heart will sing. You are good. You are good. And with everything, with everything, I will praise. I will praise. Oh, oh. Come on, church, all over this place. Come on, we come and give him glory. Come on, I want you to shout for him here this morning. Yeah. Come on, we give him all the praise. Come on, all over this place, I want to hear you say this. This is a day you made, so I will give you praise. Whatever comes my way, I rejoice in you. This is a day you made. So I will give you praise whenever comes my way. I rejoice in you. This is the day you made. So I will give you praise whenever comes my way. I rejoice in you. Oh, 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 You are good, you are good, and with everything, I will praise, I will praise, so my heart will sing. You are good, you are good, and with everything, I will praise, I will praise, oh, oh. Give him glory. Come on, he is good. He is good. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on, church, all over. Come on, we give him praise. We give him worship. Come on, we give him worship. Come on, we just begin to lift him up. Oh, hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, we just begin to worship him. You give life, you are love, 
you bring light to every heart. Church, we sing you give, you give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great all over this place. Just lift your hands. Yeah. Come on, we sing and all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will say great are you Lord? And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. Bones will say, Great are you Lord? Come on, we declare all the earth, all the earth, all the will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will say Lift your hands as a sign of surrender. Oh, 
all begin to cry out to Jesus this morning. Father, we love you. Father, we praise you. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. You are worthy. Oh, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Oh, Father God, we come to worship you. We come to lift up the name of Jesus. We come to exalt you. Come on, church. Begin to cry out. Hallelujah. Begin to worship God in your own words, in your, all of your heart. Come on, lift them up. Lift them up this morning as we prepare to sing more worship songs. Oh, let it be your prayer this morning. Hallelujah. We worship you, Jesus. Oh, I love you, Father. I thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are awesome. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for my salvation. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, mighty God. King of kings and Lord of lords. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Wonderful, beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. Wonderful, beautiful, glorious, matchless in every way. Wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Just in every way, wonderful, beautiful, glorious. Come on, church, we say wonderful, beautiful, glorious. the presence of God is here this morning. This is an awesome song to sing, to worship Jesus. Just let this song just minister to you. We're going to sing it again. And I want you to just listen to the words and how we precious God, we exalt Him and say how wonderful, how beautiful, how glorious. Oh, to be in His presence. That's what we're here for, church. We're here to be in the presence of God. Come on, let's worship God as we sing it again and give it all you got. Come on, give it all you got. Oh, it's all about Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Suddenly wiped away Hearing your presence And all of my gains now fade away Every crown no longer on display
Precious Heavenly Father, here in your presence. We are here in your presence, Father. Oh, we love you. We praise you. We give you all the glory. Oh, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Father. We thank you this morning. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your presence. Oh, yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, worship the Lord, church. Worship Jesus. That's right, Father God. We bow before you, Lord, in all humbleness, before the feet of your throne. We humbly come before you to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. We thank you for saving us. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for your miraculous touch. Oh, we worship you, almighty God, King of kings and Lord of lords. We exalt you this morning, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, we give you all the glory. And Father, we lift you up this morning, because it's all about you and your word for us today. And the man of God that you were going to fill with your boldness and your Holy Ghost and fire and your anointing. For your word to come forth and penetrate our hearts and our spirits and our minds and our bodies bodies, Lord, that will bring miraculous healing, that will bring a miraculous touch, Father, that will remove the scales from our eyes and help us to see, oh, how you are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. We lift up the sick name of Jesus, that you're given a mighty way for those that need a job this morning, my God, for those that need a financial increase, Father God. Father, we pray that you continue to move and open doors for your children. Oh, we thank you in advance for we know you are working behind the scenes, oh God. Father, we pray for more salvations. We pray for more souls for your kingdom, God. We lift up our prayer board, Lord. We push, Lord God. We pray until something happens for those prayer requests, for the miracles, Lord God, that we're just trusting in you, for you to come through with, Almighty God. Letting your good will and perfect timing be done. We lift it up to you, Almighty God. We know, God, that we are trusting in you. We stand on your word, Father. We thank you in advance because you're the King of kings and the Lord of lords, our Savior that we run to, our strong tower, God, our shield, God, our fortress, our refuge. Oh, we love you and lift you up, Father, and we just give you all the glory and all the honor in the name of Jesus. And we have a special prayer request this morning, my God. We pray for the situation in the Middle East, my God. We lift up the country of Israel. Israel, Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray, oh God, for peace and my God. We thank you for them. Lord, we ask you, Lord, and give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And all the people of God say this morning, Amen. Hallelujah. Whoa, thank you, Jesus. Give Jesus a praise clap I'll bring this morning. Let's get out of our seats. Let's greet one another this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Yes, hallelujah.
Praise the Lord. Come on, give Jesus some praise, God, Barbara. This morning, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. As we make our way back to our seats, hallelujah. Give the person next to you a high five or God bless you. Shake their hand. Let them know that you're happy to see them in the house of God this morning. Amen. One thing about Victory Outreach Church of East Los Angeles is we love to fellowship. Amen. Pastor Hector Cash says that's the sign of a healthy church. Come on, somebody. Amen. Where the body of Christ is in love with Jesus and in love with each other. Hallelujah. God bless you. It's good to see you, family, this morning. We want to welcome you to Victory Victory Outreach Church of East Los Angeles, amen, where we bring the hope of Jesus to our city and to the live stream city and to you right here, amen, live on location, amen, give Jesus a praise clap offering this morning, hallelujah, thank you Jesus. We are going to continue in the order of our service this morning as we go through our uh, order of worship and our announcements, amen. This morning, amen, welcome everybody, Sunday morning, praise the Lord, we made it to a brand new day, our, our cups are going to be filled and overflowing, hallelujah, so we can get back out there and begin to do the work of Jesus Christ, spreading the gospel, amen, of Jesus, hallelujah. Also, every Tuesday, we have Bible studies throughout East Los Angeles and Los Angeles County, if you don't go to one, hallelujah, we'd like to invite you and encourage you to attend a Bible study. They're less formal. You can ask more questions, hallelujah. You can find out more about the Bible, amen, at these awesome life groups which we have throughout East Los Angeles and Los Angeles County. You can see any of the leaders here right after service, and we'll be more than happy to help you, amen, if you have any questions. Also, every Thursday night, live breakthrough service here, live on location, via YouTube and Facebook as well. We want to welcome the live stream congregation. We thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. Praise the Lord. And every time you do log in, and we just want you to know that Jesus loves you, and so do we, and we really mean that. Amen. So God bless you right there in your home, in your car, at work, or wherever you find yourself. Hallelujah. I want you to know Jesus loves you. Amen. And then also, we have some special announcements. Someone say, tomorrow... Tomorrow, I'm glad you asked, hallelujah, because tomorrow at Victory Outreach Compton, we have a women's discipleship with Sister Jessica Lopez all the way from Victory Outreach Guadalajara. Yes, it starts at 7 p.m., amen, so there you can have an uh, awesome time, amen, to be there with all the sisters and hear Sister Jessica, amen, uh, uh, awesome ministry taking place in Guadalajara, Mexico, praise the Lord. And also we want to let everybody know about our M Time Rally, amen, April 21st, yes, taking place at Victory Outreach Whittier, amen, and so it's $10 per person, register online, amen, also $5 for child care, we have the best child care taking already organized and ready and prepared for your children, so this way you can focus on Jesus and be ministered to there at the end time rally, amen, our founder, pastor, Sonny Argonzoni, Sister Julie Argonzoni, you don't want to miss. Praise the Lord. It's going to be an exciting time. And then also this way you can mark your calendar for May 30th, 31st for Watchmen Arise Prayer Summit. These prayer summits are awesome, amen, and we get some awesome uh, direction, amen, as we come together as a ministry and pray and seek the Lord, hallelujah, for this year. Praise God. A lot of Coming up April the 28th, uh, we have United We Can Day taking place amen this is one play this is one opportunity for you to get involved is to come dressed as a, a, a international a country amen any country you want to dress up as as the costume is nice praise the lord that's one way you can get involved we want you to participate and have some fun for united we can day as you know united we can day with all the ministries around the world that victory outreach has the flag pound planted in a victory outreach international so we are worldwide hallelujah and more information to come on that on united we can day praise the lord so those are our announcements this morning uh, we have some awesome video promotions for you so please draw your attentions to the screens in the face around the world in Mexico, it's reaping time. In Africa, it's reaping time. 
God likes to take them. What God is able to do. Big news. Bethy is now a part of Victory Outreach Bible College. Our goal is to educate, equip, and inspire a generation of visionary leaders. Students earn an associate's in biblical and theological studies, and then a bachelor's in Christian ministry. At Victory Outreach Bible College, we provide pathways for all students, including the third wave generation, training men and women for effective ministry. And for those who feel God's calling to be a licensed minister, now is the time to take the next step to further your academic training and prepare for effective ministry. Enrollment is now open. Bethy is not going away. Instead, it's a fundamental part of VOBC. Our goal is to graduate the best, the brightest, the boldest, and the bravest visionary leaders who will continue the legacy of Victory Outreach International in the inner cities around the world. Start today. Visit VOBibleCollege.org. I'm coming out of the battle and I'm stepping in to a brand new season. There is a future for us. There is an anointing for us. The anointing is going to explode. There are miracles. viviendo los últimos días to speak to every mountain come on somebody praise the lord this morning say thank you jesus amen aren't you glad you made it to service this morning so good to see everyone in east l.a you know, I, I could say, praise the Lord with all my heart on the face of the earth. Amen. With our giving, you can give through push pay. You could choose one of the different methods you see up on the screen. You can text your gift or you can just scan the QR codes that are displayed here. Amen. Or just ask the ushers for an envelope. And in 2020. You know that for over 57 years, amen, Victory Outreach Ministry has been reaching treasures out of darkness in the inner cities of the world. And one of the ways we do that, church, is through our generous giving. It's God's people who support God's work, amen? Tell your neighbor, it's God's people, that's you and me, who support God's work. And we're not a rich people, amen. We're not government funded in Victory Outreach. We depend on faith. We depend on the Lord, amen. We live by faith, amen. But I could say honestly, here in our church, we bring the hope of Jesus Christ to the city of East Los Angeles. And if I were to call testimonies this morning of people, amen, just wave your hand if your life has been changed in this church, amen. Wave your other hand if you got saved in this church. Oh, look at all the hands. Amen. Praise the Lord. And here we believe in needing, needing the needs of her. If you're in need, don't just talk about it. Go out and do something about their needs. Amen. Right here we teach people to serve God, to reach their potential, fulfill their calling in Christ, so that people and their families can live a better quality of life and one day make it to heaven. Oh, hallelujah. That's exciting. Amen. How many want to see people reach their destiny? Amen. And get to the finish line. You know that the Bible compares living this life as running a race. 1 Corinthians 9.24 says, Don't you know that in a race all the runners have to run, but only one gets the prize. The prize is talking about our eternal reward in heaven. We need to reach this world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're all in a race to reach our destiny. Amen. And I heard a story recently in 2017 during a 10K race, I believe it was in Maine, New Hampshire. And there was a runner by the name of Jesse Orak who was trying to make it to the finish line. He ended up collapsing. And the guy who was running behind him could have easily stepped over him and claimed the first place trophy for himself. Amen. But instead, he chose to stop and help him and extend his hand and lifted him up on his feet so he could complete the race. 
His name was Robert Gomez. He was the second place in that race. And when the race was over, they asked him, why did you do it? Amen. He gave this statement, because I felt the need to up those who are downcast. And that's what our tithes and our offerings, our financial comp- contributions do for your church. And it enables us to help lift those who are fallen so they can make it to the finish line and become champions in Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. You know, that runner very well could have stepped over the guy and won first place for himself. He chose to stop and help that one weak person to get up. Amen. I don't know about you this morning. I'm willing to take second place so somebody can make it to the finish line. To slow down my life a little bit. You guys know I drive rideshare, right? Every day I'm looking in that rearview mirror. Is this the one that's going to receive the prize of salvation today? Amen. <sighs> to slow down my life so help someone struggling so they can, together we can reach the finish line as the ushers make their way. The Bible says that two are better than one because when one falls down, the other can lift them up. Amen. But pity the one who has no one to lift them up. Jesus will never let you down. And our church, amen, will help you to get up. Amen. We've been doing it for years to live the life God desires for you. We'll always love you. We'll pray for you. If you're hungry, we'll feed you. If you're sick, we'll go visit you in the hospital. Amen. And, you know, our people will always chase you down, get your phone number, amen, so plug you into our events, as you've seen up on the screens, so you can fulfill your calling and your potential in life, amen. And just invite you to be part of our church family, amen. Stand with me, amen. You know, I've been part of this ministry for many, many years, and never have I held back on my giving. There's been times where I don't have it, but I still give. Amen. And God blesses. Amen. And that's because I gave Jesus my heart. Okay, little as much in God's hands. Or maybe you never gave. You're not a consistent tithe of your kingdom. So we can see more souls saved in 2024 in East LA and all over the world. In Jesus' precious and beautiful name we pray. Amen and amen. <laughs> sorrows and not treating my shame and I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord we sing yes Lord and yes Lord and yes yes Lord yes Lord and yes Lord and yes yes Lord yes Lord and yes Lord and yes yes Lord amen we sing yes Lord and yes Yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, and yes, yes, Lord, amen. Cause I'm training my sorrows, and I'm training my shame, and I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. And I'm training my sickness, and I'm training my pain. And I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Come on, church, we say, Yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, and yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, and yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Amen. Oh, say, Yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, and yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, and yes, Lord, and yes, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, and yes, yes, Lord. Amen. Come on, let's give him praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, church, all over this place now. Let's just prepare ourselves. Come on, for what God wants to do here today, this morning. Come on, let's just be in a worship. Oh, 
he's worthy so God of Abraham you're the God of covenants your faithful promises time and time again you have proven you do just what you said Though the storms may come and the winds may blow, I remain steadfast. And let my heart learn when you speak a word, it will come to pass. Great is your faithfulness to Come on, can we praise the Lord this morning? I know it's a little cloudy, a little cold, a little rainy, but that's okay. Amen. Hallelujah. We got the fire of the Holy Ghost within us. Hallelujah. We got the hope of God. Yes. There is a river where goodness flows. There is a fountain that 
and drown sorrows. There is an ocean that is Woo. deeper than fear. The tide is rising, rising. Come on. There is a current serving deep inside. It's overflowing from the heart of God. The flood of heaven crashing over us. The tide is rising, rising. Bursting, bursting up from the ground. We feel it. taking place at Sister Isabel's house. So they will have the ads. What time is that? 7 p.m. Amen. So let's get our young people, amen, ready to go. Amen. And I'm, 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 I'm so blessed. I'm so blessed, amen, because I know that God has great and mighty things for the gang. Somebody say amen. Those of you that are new, gang means it's an acronym for God's Anointed Now Generation. Amen. So if you're, I think the age is from 35 under. Amen. From 12, 13, what's the age group? 13 to, to 25 or 35. Amen. So, so amen. Some of you say amen. That your kids don't want you to go with them though. Amen. Come on you guys. <laughs> Some of you are 25 with a 15-year-old. My God, Lord, have mercy. Amen. Somebody say, <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. You love Jesus? Yeah. Oh, my God. It's good to be in church, isn't it? Yeah. Huh? I said, it's good to be in church. Amen. Yeah. Uh, Sunday. Oh, Lord, what am I doing? Uh, where am I? How did I get here? Amen. Hallelujah. But it's good to wake up saved. Amen. Yeah. It's good to wake up sober. Oh, amen. It's good to wake up sane. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. God. God is faithful. I want you to turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 10, 23. Amen. So also for the mighty men of valor coming up. Amen. Oh, man, we need to start signing up if you haven't registered already. Amen. If you're a worthy man at it. <laughs> I said, where are the men at? Yeah, you, you need to be there at a man's conference. It's a man's conference. Somebody say amen. And we're going to get our marching orders. Amen. Hallelujah. How I many of you know we're a family, but we're also an army. Amen. Of the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 10, 23. When you have it, say praise God. 
Bless you, amen. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23, when you have it, say praise the Lord. We're going to be putting it on the screen. We're going to read two, the NIV and the NLT, same scripture. It says, let us hold on skate man. Oh, my God. Did you hear what I just said? Did you hear what the word of God just said? For God can be trusted. I'm just going to go preach over here. I'm going to go join that Bi Spanish Bible study over there. Amen. I said, for God can be trusted to keep his promises. Somebody say something. That's good news. Amen. We live in an in a age where you really can't trust too many people. Amen. As a matter of fact, some of you probably have in Chinese letters, trust no man. Really, but you don't know that. Amen. I knew a guy that had all kinds of roses and then he had void. The new generation put void now. Before we put a rose over you, amen. You know what I'm saying? Oh, over the ex. Somebody say something. Now they just put void. I'm like, my God. And we have, we all been victims of broken promises. I said, we've all been victims of broken promises. And we've all been perpetrators of broken promises. Oh, come on, somebody. Oh, mm. yeah. What the word of God affirms, amen. Because I came in like that. I came in paranoid. I came in trusting nobody, amen. Especially myself. Oh, my goodness. Can somebody say, can we keep it real here a little bit, amen. Huh? But oh, one thing that I have learned about the Lord, amen. Oh, the God is love, the God is powerful, but oh, that he is faithful, that God keeps his word, that he is trustworthy. Somebody say amen, hallelujah. Oh my God. Did you hear me, church? Here in Hebrews chapter 10, in our text, amen, this statement is made in the content or the context of what the Hebrew writer been talking about in the previous verses and what he was talking about, amen, he was talking about the need for, as he gives this statement or give this scripture here, what he says, amen, that God, amen, that God is faithful to hold on swervingly. He said, hold on unswervingly. That's why he says that. Hold on, you know, without letting go. Somebody say amen. Hold on tightly, amen, to the hope we affirm, you know, because he, 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 he was teaching them about endurance and perseverance to trial. Just because me and you are men and women of God and, and children of God doesn't mean that we're exempt, amen, of the I don't know what, until you get to heaven. But we got work to do here. How many of you know our international theme for Victory Outreach International is until he comes, amen? Until he comes, we're not just going to sit here. Until he comes, we're not just going to be idle. Until he comes, we're going to get busy. We know Christ is coming back, and we know he's coming back soon. You better just watch the news and see what's going on. Somebody's saying that we're living in the end times. You better go to the end time rally. Somebody say amen, hallelujah. But until he comes, we're not just going to be hiding under the chair, under the chair, under our beds. We're going to be getting busy, amen, because God has given us an assignment to evangelize, to let the people know that he loves them, that he died for them, that there's salvation, that there's transformation. That there is blessings, hallelujah. Did you hear me? But it's going to be filled with hardships. And he says, hold on. He's exhorting them and encouraging them to hold on and to endure and to persevere through the trials and the testing that come our way. Somebody say something. Huh? And one, of the way, and one of the main ways, beloved, to do that is to hold on to the promises. Did you hear what I'm talking about? 
Uh, I want to share with you three observations on God's promises. Amen? And number one is the purpose of the promise as a declaration. Uh, see, the promise, the purpose why God gives us promise because it's something tangible that we could hold on to. Somebody say amen. Did you hear me? The promises assures me. Amen. So it gives me peace. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something off the back, beloved. It is not God's will for you to be as a basket case. Is this on? It is not God's will for you to live in fear and stress and worry and edgy and frustrated and mad all the time and walk around like you stepped on something on your way into church and you, know, you got baptized in lemon juice and, and oh my God, that is not God's will, beloved. Did you hear me? And to live intimidated because we are the salt and the light of the world, beloved. We are supposed to influence, impact the world. Did you hear me? But yes, we go through problems, but God has given us promises, and, and, and the purpose is about, it, it assures us, amen, and it gives us peace, hallelujah. Whenever I find myself tripping a little bit, oh, am I the only one here? Some of you is tripping right now. So when you're not in church all the time, because you be tripping, doubting, stressed out. Hello, somebody. I said, how come you don't come to church? I got a lot of problems. Well, that's why, no go ahead. Oh, my God. How many of us understand that? Amen. Amen. But when I, oh, when I, when I'm reminded and I remember the promises of God, it reassures me. Oh, as crazy and chaotic and hectic and looking whatever it may, you know, impossible and hard and pain. I got a feeling <laughs> because of the promises of God. Everything is going to be all right. Hallelujah. So it gives us peace. Amen. How many could use some peace? Huh? Stop taking that medication, man, that you don't need. Hello. If you need to take it, but you, some of you, you're taking someone else's medication. Yeah. Amen. Your name ain't Lee? Amen. <laughs> Did you hear me? Stop smoking that weeds, man. Huh? It's prescribed by who? Dr. Waco? Huh? Not as legal according to God. I was, a, I was like, a, a, I was like a, a, a garbage disposal. Any garbage I put in me. Amen. 34 years without none of that stuff. Because God gives me something greater than that. Somebody say amen. Did you hear me? Peace versus hallelujah. Did you hear me? Sometimes we're doing something for God or, or, or facing life's troubles with, you know, parenting or our memories that God never leaves us, that God never forsakes us. We got a promise that it says that we could do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, somebody. Si se puede. Oh, no, 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 I forgot. No Mexicans in East L.A. I said, si se puede. Uh, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens. You could stay sober. You could, you could stay out of prison. You could stay out of jail. You could be a good parent. You could stay married. Somebody say something. You could do all that God has called you to do. All that God has called you to become. Because there's a promise there. In spite of. Amen. Oh my God. I feel like preaching a little bit. <laughs> Is that her? Oh, girl, you, good to see you, man. When I met Maria, she used to scare me, man. Because she'd be coming at me 
fall in my face. What's up, Pastor? <laughs> I'm like, what's up? You know I'm paranoid. You, you, you already, you're violating my space over here, dude. <laughs> we love you, girl. Amen. The promise anchors me. It anchors us. We're not on swerve, swerving all over the place, man. Unstable. See, doubt does that. Did you hear what I'm talking about? Doubt has us all over the place, man. Living unstable. Thinking unstable. Did you hear me? Huh? Some of you have got mental instability. You need to get anchored in the word of God. Because the word of God will stabilize your mental issues. I'm telling you. I said, I'm telling you. Huh? The promise anchors us. When, when, when the turbulence comes, hallelujah, and the storms come, amen, and, and the shaking comes, hello, somebody. Man, the word of God is able to anchor us, and we could continue to be steady and consistent and faithful. Somebody say amen. That is the purpose why God gives us promises, beloved. The Bible contains many promises. In fact, some scholars estimate there are over 8,000 promises recorded in Scripture. Imagine that. Oh, my God. That's a good place to say amen and hallelujah. Over 8,000 promises. And listen to this. 7,487 of them are God making promises to mankind, to humankind. Hallelujah. So that means there's promises there for you. There's promises there for me as individuals, as families, as a church. As a, can somebody get excited? Hallelujah. And the purpose is because it's there to help us to endure and persevere, holding on to our hope. Hallelujah. But we have to discover these promises. That's why we have to study the word of God. I said we have to be students of the word of God. Because as we study the Bible seriously, amen, consistently, we begin to discover these promises for us, for our families, for our kids, for our problems, for our situation, for our condition. Somebody say something, hallelujah. Did you hear me, church? That's why me and my wife, man, when we were marriage was facing destruction and our family was facing destruction. And man, we didn't know. But man, we went back. We were reassured through what? Through the promises that God had given us. Somebody say amen. And even though we couldn't see a way out or we couldn't see a solution through our physical eyes or our spirit or our suffering. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Second is that we just talked about the purpose of the promises. Second is the, the promises come with a premise. See, I want you to understand that. Amen. Let me give you an example of a promise in the Bible with a premise. That means there's, there's a basis for the promise to be fulfilled. There's a condition. Did you hear what I'm talking about? Second Chronicles 7, 14, amen? The latter part is the fit, I'm going to read the end, the promise. I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and restore their land and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh, turn, bro. Sister, you got to make a U-turn. Uh-huh, did you hear me? Uh, I would, then he says, ah, then I, see, the promise comes with a premise. And most promises that God gives us comes with a condition, comes with a basis, a premise in which me and you have to be obedient and fulfill in order to receive and attain 
the promise. Oh, my God. Don't get caught up in the fad in the internet where all they preach is the promise, but they don't tell you that there's if, that there's things that you and me need to do. We do our part, and then God does his part. Somebody say amen. Did you hear what I'm talking about, church? We need to walk in obedience. It says here, repentance is required. Turning from our wicked ways is required. Somebody say something. And then comes with a beautiful, he says, have to be following up on. I'm a lot. You've been in church 20 years, Jack. Did you hear me? Why are you always getting lost? Maybe you're not a sheep. Maybe you're a goat. <laughs> Did you hear me? He says, and turn. Turn, man. But you don't know I've been this. Turn, just make a turn. Somebody say amen. Huh? We all had a, you know, I mean, you look at me right now, you don't look like, you know, so you nice, gordito, you know. <laughs> it's terrible. We live there. You see my wife, mira que cute she is, at the little beret. And <laughs> she's so cute, my wife, man. Should have met her before. <laughs> Girl, you better watch her stuff. Somebody say amen. Huh? Oh, Lord. I'm, but we made a turn. I said, we're not turning back. Promise has come with a premise. Did you hear me, church? Huh? Sometimes we get discouraged and the devil lied to us because we haven't been properly taught this principle. We like to claim the promises. Yes, give me, give me, give me. Bless me, bless me, bless me. Do it, do it, do it. Miracles, Lord, miracles, Lord, miracles. Uh -uh. Yeah, miracles. And God will turn it, and God will make a way where there seems there is no way. But, but, but you have to do your part eh, so you could receive the blessing of the promise. You got to make sure that there's no, if there's a premise there, then you have to apply that. You got to work. Somebody say amen, hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you, there's other promises where they come with no premise, amen. Like God loves you, amen. God, you don't have to earn God's love. You don't have to do nothing for, God loves you just the way you are. God loves you just the way you are now but if you want to change <laughs> amen if you want to advance succeed experience and grow in your faith then there's premises somebody say amen did you hear me church and last but not least and this is another important part here. The promise comes in a process. Did you hear what I'm talking about? Huh? Genesis 18, 14. It says, anything too hard for the Lord? The question rhetorical, of course not. And then look what this is. That when he was speaking to Abraham, that God, and Abraham and Sarah were already past the age of childbirth. And even when they were young, she was barren. She couldn't produce children. Amen. And that's one of the things God had promised. Ay, pero mi Abraham. This is before the invention of the blue pill. Amen. Amen. What's the blue pill? Stop smoking that stuff, see? <laughs> Moving on. Amen. And then look what he tells them. I will return to you at the appointed time. You ain't having this kid tomorrow. You ain't having this kid right now. There's a process of time. There's a point in time in our promises. It's a process in which they come to get fulfilled. Somebody say amen. And then he said, by this time next year, and Sarah you will have a son. Hallelujah. Can somebody say amen? Can somebody say amen? Hold on. Don't, don't, don't let go, amen, of your assurance. Don't let go. It's like it's delaying. It seems like it will happen. If God said it, it will happen. Somebody shout yeah. 
Amen. That's why I say hold on. Amen. With all your might. Hallelujah. Unswervingly. Without doubt. Hallelujah. I want you to focus on that. Amen. Look what he says here. For he, he says all this, let us hold on unswervingly to the hope we profess, right? Endure, persevere, be patient. And then he says, he ends, who promise. See, in receiving a promise, because many people promise us stuff. Amen. The world promises stuff. Politicians promise us stuff. Amen. We're good at making promises, but we have a bad track record, many of us, on keeping those promises. Now, as men of God and as women of God, we got to understand that we got to do our very best. That if we make a promise to our kids, to our, our vows, to our marriage and church, that we need to keep those promises. But it's not always possible for us because we are humans. It's not an excuse because there are many times we fail to keep promises, not because we can keep them, but because we have lack of character. Oh, my God. Because they're still jiving in us. I'm going through something right now like that. I, I, I already committed myself to do something. And I don't want to do it now. <laughs> kind of thought, I should have thought about it more. That's why the Bible says count the cost. I should have thought about it more. Man, I already said yes. My wife, those of you that know me, when I say yes, man, I'm going to kill myself to keep that promise. So now I got to go on with it because I already say yes. Oh, my God. It's hard sometimes. But I could do it. But I don't want to do it. See, that's, but there are times where I literally can. You know what? I'm going to be there in 20 minutes. And then I come in on the freeway and bless that freeway of L.A. 20 accidents. And I couldn't keep my word to be there in 30 minutes. So I got there in two hours and 20 minutes. I couldn't help it. It's beyond my control. Somebody, do you understand what I'm trying to say? We are limited sometimes. Did you hear me? But see, that statement, he, the person that gives the promises matters. And in this case, the person is God. The person is Christ. The person is Jesus. He says, the one who calls you in 1 Thessalonians 5.24 to re and there are many other scriptures, but this, I like this. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. Hallelujah. My God. Um, and we live in a day and age, like I tell you, that there's not too many for sure things. Not too many people that could keep their promises. But the Bible reassures us and reminds us who it is we serve. And it speaks here not so much of the capacity of God. Because God, it says, is there anything too hard? Almighty. And we know that. How many of you know that God is almighty? But it gets personal here. And he now speaks about his character. He says, he, he who gave you that promise, he who gives us those promises, is faithful. He's not double-minded. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Oh, I know your men lie to you many times, and now you hate men. But who chose those men? Okay, there you were. Chances are there was at least one person in your life that warned you, don't go there. And there you went. Can we keep it real here? Amen. Or that woman, some of you got played by a woman. 
that girl is poison. <laughs> and now you have void all over yourself. <laughs> now you have tor uh, roses with thorns and then growing out of it. <laughs> Amen. Huh? Okay, all of us have been lied to. But that's why the Bible wants you to know. And that's why it's important for us to walk with the Lord and get to know God. God knows you, but do you know God? Oh, I know you may say, see, the proof is in the pudding. The proof is not when everything's good. The, 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 the faith is not, see, hard times. Hard times and trials. Do not produce faith. They expose your faith. They expose your faith. What produces faith is a relationship or intimacy with God. Our knowledge of God and our knowledge of his word. Did you hear what I'm talking about? And then when you go through a trial, when you go through a struggle, when you go through a crisis, then it exposes to see where you really are in your faith. So serve yourselves, beloved. You could talk all this. I could talk all that. Que, you know what? I love Jesus. Que rifa, que para, controla. Y no, uh, God alone. And I serve the Lord only. And, and, and then the, here comes a challenge. Or here comes a... I said, man. And here, I, remember Peter? Peter, remember Peter? When the Lord told them that he was going to die on the cross, I must go through Jerusalem, right, and, and, and die there. And Never, man! These guys could all forsake you. Not me, Lord, I'll die for you. Man. <laughs> what did the Lord tell them? Before the rooster crows, you deny me three times, boy. And what happened? But the Lord restored him. The Lord restored him. And he learned. And Peter learned from his mistake. It's not we're going to make mistakes, but it's learning. But the best thing that me and you could learn is that God came to us. One of my main promises that God gave me from the beginning was Philippians 4.13. Because I came in Looking at all my limitations, looking at all my addictions, looking at all my setbacks. And I said, I can't do this. I can't live like this. I can't. That's not me. Oh, my God. I hate when people say that. Oh, my God. Seriously. But the Lord gave me this promise. You can do all things through me. Because I will strengthen you. I will empower you. In your weakness, you are made strong. Somebody say, in your foolishness, you are made wise. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord. He who promised is faithful, regardless of the odds, regardless of the handicap, regardless of the setback, regardless of the attacks, regardless of who's against us or what comes against us. He who promised is faithful. Hang on. Hold on. Keep going. It will happen. Hallelujah. Oh, come, come to the altar. Come to the altar. Those of you watching on Facebook or YouTube. Come, come, come. Some of you need to be running here. Oh. He who promises faithful. Come on. Come on. I trust in God. I trust in God. My Savior, yes. the one oh. who could never fail. He's a good God. He's a powerful God. He can never fail. Come on. My Savior, the one who can never fail. Oh, my God will bring you through. He will do it. He will do it. I trust He's doing it. He's doing it. My Savior, the one who can never fail. 
Precious Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you. Father, we thank you for this word, Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord, that these times, oh God, when we make our mistakes and then, Lord, we ask that you help us learn from our mistakes, Father. Father, that you would teach us to trust in you, to stand on your word, oh God. Lord, that you would build our faith because your word says, Lord, that faith comes by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Lord, that we would begin to commit it to reading the word of God word, on your promises as we do and part, our part in the premises father god lord in jesus name we thank you this eve this morning father we thank you we thank you for your word oh a word that is so needed lord powerful word of god lord teach us guide us direct us this morning god oh hallelujah hallelujah right there where you are just we thank you for what you've taught us this morning father seal it in our heart help us lord god to apply it to our lives and this morning if you're here and you don't know jesus christ but you want to change you've made mistakes you want to learn from those mistakes oh i want you to know you're in the right place that Jesus loves you. He brought you here. It was your divine appointment to be here today. And so I'm going to invite you this morning to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And if that's you and you're willing, amen, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. The prayer of salvation. To receive, amen, the miracle of salvation. The eternal gift of life. Hallelujah in Jesus Christ. Just repeat this prayer with me. Say, dear Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of all my sins, for I am a sinner. Cleanse me, wash me, and come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. Oh, guide me and direct me. Let your word be sealed in my heart and teach me, Lord. Teach me to follow your word. Teach me, Lord, to do the premises to, so that I can receive the blessings of the promises of your word. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you for salvation today. I thank you for your forgiveness of my sins today. Oh, I thank you for your love and your mercy and your grace. And I give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, and everyone says, Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. As we make our way back to our seats, we have a special, hold on, I'm trying to keep you or force you here, but if you understand. But we do have a special, amen. We have a birthday in the house, hallelujah. Yeah, we have a birthday this morning. Brother Raymond. Oh, come on. Brother Raymond, amen. 
This brother's been through thick and thin. And it's been the glory of God. Hallelujah. It's God that brought him in. And it's God that's changing his life. Please share with us, brother. I just want to thank God for my salvation. And just be sure to greet him before you leave. Wish him a happy birthday. Amen. Maybe a Pentecostal handshake. Oh, come on, somebody. Along with your prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Come on, on the count of three. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy. Happy birthday. Yes, hallelujah. Praise the Lord once again. Amen. Make sure you wish him a happy birthday. Also, the God's anointed now generation. Amen. Wednesday at 7 p.m. Gang third wave night. Yes, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God bless you. You are dismissed. Stay in fellowship. Meet somebody new right here in the fellowship area. Praise the Lord. We're trying to keep those doors. Not, those doors aren't working too well. So we're going to try to keep those closed. If you could go all the way around. If you have to go out that way, the usher will let you out right there on the front. God bless you and thank you for your cooperation.